want to, uh, hey, I just feel like cooking today. I'm, I'm gonna do hard things. I'm going to do things that are difficult. I'm going to make some pierogi. No, they're not gonna be traditional. No, they're probably not gonna be very good. No, I'm not very good at cooking, but it's what I feel like doing. And I wanna show you my process when I'm in the mood to make delicious food for no money. Because guys, potatoes and flour are like super cheap. I don't know, I just feel like cooking today and I, there doesn't always have to be a lesson. Okay, I start my pierogi the same way I eat my Tootsie Roll Pops, from the inside out. So for the filling, you get your pot of water, throw your potatoes in, make it nice and hot, and then just wander off for a while. Oh, no, wait, there's more to the filling than just potatoes. So you grab your cutting board, you grab your onion, and your splitter, and you split that onion, and it just falls apart by itself, basically. Cutting stuff's not that hard. So then you get your garlic, boom. And uh, once again, it'll just fall apart by itself. And then you use the knife as intended. Uh, it's actually a musher. They added the sharp edge later. Yeah, a little history lesson for you. I bet you didn't know that. This is the spicy part of the party because you're going to get your garlic nice and naked. Take that little jacket off. And then you're going to take off the little bottoms and then take off their little tops. They don't mind. They can't feel anything. But once you get your garlics good and nude and topless and bottomless, like a Canadian strip club, uh, then you're gonna do what Gordon Ramsay says to do and just put some salt on it. Uh, apparently the salt is supposed to keep the weeping of the garlic from causing it to stick to the knife in your hands. Uh, in my experience this somewhat works. Um, but yeah, then you just get your chip chopper, start chip chopping your garlic. Uh, also, if you decide that you have cut too much garlic, it still works against vampires, even if it's not in cloves. Get your frying pan that has the least number of bodies on it, take it off your hanging rack, and just put it anywhere. If you have appeased the kitchen spirits, some butter may appear. If you don't cook with butter, then it's okay, you don't have to, nobody's going to force you to. Now, right here, if you talk real saucy to your butter, it'll heat right up and start melting in the pan. But if you're too saucy, the kitchen spirits will get upset and your butter will just disappear again. So here you just need to dump your onions and garlic into your pan. And you're basically going to become their high school guidance counselor. Your job is to make them come out of their shell and start finding their voice so that they'll be able to speak up and get real loud. Encourage them to try out for theater or join the band. And just like your parents, put them aside and then focus on the children who still need development. Uh, yes, I boiled these in their skins. That's just how I learned to make pierogi in the first place. So you take out their water, and then once they're boiled, the skin just comes right off. I use a fork and a knife for this part just because they tend to be really hot. Uh, it turns out that game of hot potato is no joke. It's based in fact. Uh, so I decided that my potatoes were still a little too wet. I didn't really get all the water out. Uh, so... In order to do that, if you just put a strainer on top, and then you take it and you shake it really hard, all of the water will come out. Mert, please do not shake water all over yourself, especially if it's just been boiling. Uh, I shouldn't have to say this, but obviously you can hurt yourself. Uh, so yeah, just poke at it with a fork and a knife until all the skins come off. Once you've got your naked potatoes, uh, you go and grab your potato ricer. If you are afraid of a bunch of little holes, uh, I believe it's called trypophobia, you're not going to want to watch this, especially since trypophobia is aggravated whenever things are coming out of those holes. But uh, for people who are well adjusted, unlike myself, if you just grab your potato, stick it in your ricer, uh, it's really cool because it works just like a garlic press. You push it down and potato comes out. 
Disclaimer, potato will not go out unless you put potato in. Potato in, potato out, peepo, as we say in the industry. I found this potato ricer at a Goodwill for like $5. It was an insanely unfairly low price. I can't believe how much I left out. I looked out. Uh, so, yeah, um, once you're done mushing on your potatoes, uh, you can just wander away for an indeterminate amount of time if you get distracted. No, wait, I, uh, this is actually time sensitive. I need to come back and finish this because I need the potatoes to be hot for something later on. Once you're done uh, squishing your potatoes, it's time to scrape on your potatoes uh, just to get every last little starchy bit of goodness in the bowl. And then it's time for a family reunion. We're going to bring the onions and the garlic back. And there's going to be some tension because of the neglect that the onions and garlic feel. But um, they're going to learn to overcome that and not blame their sibling for uh, you know, the perceived privilege that they had. Uh, yeah, that's cottage cheese. Uh, traditionally, pierogi is made with farmer's cheese in the middle of it, which you can make. It's just a stovetop cheese, soft cheese. Uh, I don't make it um, because I, I just haven't tried yet, I guess. And then, that's right, cream cheese, or as a, a certain someone likes to call it, cream cheem. You uh, need the potatoes to be relatively hot because it's going to help the cream cheese um, like incorporate better. And then, uh, if you're like me, just don't measure your pepper. Just throw it in there. Throw it in there until you have enough. Throw some salt in there, mix it up, boom! Your filling's done. It looks horrible, but we don't have to look at it. It's going in the fridge. Obviously, this is not sponsored, but I do like bees wrap because it's linen that's coated in beeswax and it saves on, you know, plastic. Dump some flour in a bowl next. Uh, just an amount. Whatever feels good. Uh, then throw some salt in. I can't believe I measured that salt. Uh, and then do a little whirly gig to incorporate all of your dry stuff. Now it's time for the wets. We got water, we got egg. Are you guys ready to wait an uncomfortably long time for me to figure out my life and crack some eggs? Seriously, I'm terrible at cracking eggs. I thought about putting in a clip of Paul Hollywood cracking eggs because he does it incredibly proficiently and he also manages to make it look sexy. Uh, but instead, here's me and my, my sad egg struggle hands. Two eggs? What are we, Rockefellers? Alright, this one went worse than the first, uh, probably because the hen that laid this egg was a lot healthier, as you can see from that little bit of, you know, thicker shell right there. But the one thing that I can do is keep shell out of the egg water mixture. Uh, that's the that's pretty much the only thing I got going for me. Uh, throw those eggshells uh, wherever. I hear they're good to walk on or something. Next, you jab a fork in there, and you just want to swirl your eggs in water until you get orange juice. Uh, you have the choice here to either continue with the recipe or play a hilarious prank on somebody. I forgot to tell you what I was doing. So I'm making the dough for the pierogi because the pierogi is just filling inside of a dough. The egg is incorporated in order to add like a stickiness to the dough so that whenever you form the pierogi and you'll eventually boil them, it keeps it from coming apart when you boil it in the water. Now you're going to slide in your dries, you're going to throw in your wets, and then you put your wets aside, do it a little bit at a time, and then you just kind of stick your hand in there. Anytime I'm making dough, I'm like, what would Paul Hollywood do? He would just stick his hands in there. And then you just start scrounging around like you're a cat who can't stop digging in the litter box. This point is just a little balance between wet and dry. You add your wets, you add some uh, some stirs, you add some more wets, you add some more stirs. Eventually you're going to start being able to form a ball of dough. Uh, and then I had too many wets, uh, so I just started adding more dries. It's just a fine balance. If you find yourself with something that's too sticky, throw some flour in there. If it's too dry, throw a little bit more water in there. It's a balancing act. It's, it really shouldn't be that stress. Once your ball is formed, you can turn it out onto a floured surface and start kneading it. I need you to feed me wine. Mama, Mama bird, bird to baby bird. 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 Okie dokie, that's what you want. 
some sort of cuff that's not blocked by you in some way. Fair enough. There are none. There's um, oh, wait, there mugs right there. I'm really thinking of these. They're drinking wine out of these. We'll drink, oh, we'll drink wine out of literally, oh, oh, oh. Any other mug. No, I actually prefer glass, a clear glass for some reason for wine. Preferably. I want to see the legs. Show me them legs, just. Oh, no, that's recording, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I said worse, I'm sure. All right, so stop flirting around with Jeff and uh, take your portable sandwich assemblers and start mushing on that dough already. So you're going to want your dough to be somewhere between the consistency of a blobfish and Chris Christie's face. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, how could you be so political? Everybody knows that blobfish are very unpopular right now. Well, if you're still mad at Blobfish, you can go ahead and channel all of your anger into your dough. Uh, I'm told that a successful dough results from violence. But not like war profiteering, like dough from that kind of violence. I just mean beating up your dough. My dough accidentally turned out to be two conjoined doughs, so I had to surgically separate them. I'm going to keep the evil one in the basement and put all of my attention into the good half of the dough. So take your clappers and slappers and mush down on it to make it circular so that when you roll it out it'll hopefully still be somewhat circular. Spoiler alert, mine is never somewhat circular. I'm not great at rolling out dough. It always takes a really weird shape. All of this fancy kitchen equipment uh, I didn't used to have because I couldn't afford it. I used to roll these out with a wine bottle. I was about to say, you mean... Uh... <laughs> Exactly about to say. Roll them out with a wine bottle. That's what I used to do. No, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Who prioritizes buying wine over buying a rolling pin? Listen, you I got a two for one wine and rolling pin all in one bottle. You know me, I'm always after a deal. This is probably the most useful life hack that I use on a regular basis. Instead of cutting out circles and then filling it and pressing them shut, you just tuck your filling into the side like a little blankie and then you just do a little half moon cut around it and it helps seal the pierogi for you. And then you make little crimpy paw motions to give the little frill edge of the pierogi and then boom you've got a pierogi. real fast because this is going to go fast and chaotic. So I've got my slotted spoon, my boiling water, I've got a pot with some butter, butter knife. Uh, so we're going to boil the pierogi and then I'm going to um, fry it up in some butter and it's going to be delicious. So I like to do five at a time. You just carefully drop them in. Without burning yourself. And then I give them one stir just so that they don't stick to the bottom. 
and then you wait until they start, uh, as we say, dancing. Uh, while that's getting going, I'm going to heat up slowly a little bit of butter. <clears throat> Which I always wind up burning the butter, but that's just me. You know, browning butter. <clears throat> what I do when I have stuff that I'm cooking that's, um, ooh. If you're, if you've never boiled anything with dough before and you're afraid of them breaking open, um, I've only ever had two of them break open on me and even then it didn't super ruin anything. Uh, I've even done these with like meat filling and had one of the meat ones break open before, but it's salvageable. So I guess what I'm saying is, do whatever you want. I mean, if you do everything with the attitude that like, if you do everything mm -hmm. <laughs> with the attitude that it's going to work out, then uh, you're only wrong like half the time, so. That assumes you're wrong 50% of the time. I'm not wrong half the time. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you might. Gonna rescue these. Yeah. Sound like old bricks because they're frozen. Mm. Pull them onto my commemorative Richard Nixon plate. All right, so that was it. You saw me cooking, and you saw some enjoyment of some food. Uh, so, I don't know, I'll check in later. Yeah, if you enjoyed this, great, what's wrong with you? Um, if you hated it, I don't know, come back later. I'll, I'll do different things. Yeah, okay, bye. <laughs>